all right so uh, thank you everyone for joining today's uh, session and uh, <clears throat> today we have uh, dr krishna kumari she is a speech and language therapist and uh, for last 10 years she is into this uh, domain and she is providing speech and language therapies to the children uh, with the autism and uh, she is based out in noida and she is running her own center with jps paul uh, therapy center and uh, she has done many certifications into this stream so i would request ma'am to just share about herself so people cannot know about you oh yeah well thank you everyone for joining first of all yeah i am krishna kumari i have done my vslp from the manipal university i have been working exclusively with the ast population since uh, say good 10 years and uh, i have a therapy center in order as sir uh, introduced me so today exclusively we are going to talk about language development and language therapy like how do we uh, uh, develop the language skill in asd children all right so i i don't know if the sir slide show had has been shared with the people uh no i didn't share it so let me okay, share so the yeah i'll just or, or you can share on the screen for a while mean the right. rest of the people can join and then uh, i'll just start my uh, thing all right just a second <clears throat> i hope you should be able to see that uh, okay let's try once if it doesn't happen i'll just brief the whole content once okay and, all right so just a second actually people keep joining so okay all right so i just uh, open the slide uh, agenda for this today's discussion. so you can just describe it i mean i just taken all those points from your note uh yeah well so today's uh, topic as you all know language speech language and communication and socialization in asd so the hierarchy would be the asd just as a brief note what exactly asd is and what what it is characterized by and the core problem of it and the challenges how can we is it curable or not and uh, how does intervention help in that the next topic will be what is speech and language and communication all right and the next comes what are the difference among these three that what is, most of the time we are confused about what is speech and what is the difference between speech and what is the different difference between language and the communication here yeah, so we'll have a little briefing on that the differences among it and then comes the different parts of it like what is speech so in all further dif uh, different topics we are going to do as the component of each topic like what what are the component of speech errors of it and the uh, cure the intervention the therapy of it so then co will come the speech and then we are going to do the component of language the patterns of language development the errors of language development mm -hmm. and the technique mm -hmm. we use in uh, developing the language skill all right and then comes the communication and its component and finally the socialization i guess i am done with the briefing so we can just start with the further thing So let's start. As most of the parents join, have, who have joined here are probably have introduced to the term ASD. It's a really huge umbrella term. It's called autism spectrum disorder. So a spectrum word itself tells about a lot. Like so many things will be inside it. So the autism, the pervasive developmental disorder, the not specified uh, categories, and then attention deficit disorder, then hyperactivity disorder. the key point remain um, in most of them most of them is the language uh, difficulty and the socialization yeah so the asd characterized as per of dsm it is characterized by three uh, parameters which is for equal area so it's a repetition of word or the sound it could be meaningful or non meaningful for example when you say a child please give me the ball child may pick the a word or pick the whole sentence and keeps repeating for uh, no reason but even the child answers you he might he might keep repeating for a while or the repetition can go for a little longer too. then comes the stereotypic behavior in very layman term it's a repetitive behavior 
it could be a uh, one particular behavior, repetitive behavior it could be many at a time for example uh, if you observe most of the kids most of them have the spinning or hand flapping or hand tapping one of these three in a wide or wide or a subtle way you see them so like rotating of particular object or a particular movement banging of door flipping their hand those kind of thing movement of movement associated with particular object like most of the kids especially the autistic kids the kids who are on autism they have this the, they keep uh, moving the object in a particular direction it could be to and fro and the circular motion so this is that and the final and the most major challenge come is language and the social impairment yeah so language the social impairment it does not mean that they do not speak and they cannot speak it's just that they cannot relate to the outer world to the world world yeah so this is the briefing about asc now we are moving on to the core problem of it yeah so the basic core challenge of it is the inability to relate to the people and learn from the so what does exactly it means it means that like how the typically developing kid uh, learn because uh, when a kid is small we start uh, playing with the kid they look at us they well, they start they start social smile they start imitating the sound or the action if they are not uh, at the age of talking they start um, repeating the action like making the sound clapping hands or jumping or moving their particular body part in particular order the imitating but these kids the kids who are on spectrum disorder i'm talking about the kids who, who doesn't have the history of regression because there are a lot of cases like more than 50% of cases have regression after the age of 3 so the kids who are who doesn't have regression since beginning they have these symptoms like they are not related to the environment as in like any they are not responding to the particular or any of the stimulus in the environment or the people around usually kid have a certain relationship with the people around be it the parent or the any of the caregiver or the family member yeah so now coming to the cure so is it curable uh, may or may not be hasn't yet proved it's like can be 110% curable but certainly it can outgrow the diagnosis with my personal experience i have seen quite not many but uh, kids who have like been on moderate mild to moderate spectrum they have outgrown the diagnosis yet there are one or two or three few of the symptom are still there even they have outgrown the diagnosis so let's coming to the intervention of it so how does intervention help initially actually it limits the time spent in mainstream what does exactly it mean like in order to have your child uh, better invention, uh, intervention you uh, you are supposed to because of the time frame or whatever the working uh, hours of us you have to take the child out maybe out of the school maybe you have to take the uh, child uh, you cannot take your child to the social gathering or or the family thing Yeah, that time it may look really uh, taxing, but later on it helps. Gradually, more intervention leads to more age-appropriate uh, skills, and hence mainstreaming of the child in order of education or the social gathering or or the family meetings more helpful. So, what exactly the intervention uh, includes? It's a multidisciplinary, or rather, you say interdisciplinary, but. Uh, in a metro city it's very much seen that it's multidisciplinary interdisciplinary where it means like most of the therapists are working in coordination to each other be it a special educator be be it a speech therapy or the behavior therapy like aba therapist or the occupational therapist but in most of the metropolitan cities it doesn't happen like that so it remains a multidisciplinary work where ot's work work on the attention part of it or the sensory integration or sensory perception speech or uh, and language therapists work on the speech language and communication part of it special educators work, work on uh, education part of it they help the child with that and then uh, there are many other additional things like rdi relationship development uh, intervention the sports therapy the music therapy dietary intervention the other medical supports and all so whosoever is taking a multidisciplinary um, the one very strong recommendation from my end uh 
still it's not very scientifically scientifically proven but uh, most of you should must see a good dietitian why because even uh, even in our ancient uh, uh, literature it said said that gut is the second brain why do i say that because most of the kid which i have seen in my uh, working span who get all test and be it neurological test or imagine test or anything most of them have the normal outcome of the uh, the particular test but what i see difference is they have the metabolical difference in their body it means the the way our internal body functions like how do we take the food and how do we, does it uh, make the blood and and how does it becomes the neurotransmitter and all those things. so for these kid that is the most difficult part of it so diet interve intervention helps in uh, channelizing your iron in the body which ultimately helps in your uh, overall development and makes your nervous system work more efficiently uh whosoever is wherever really need to see the good dietitian like if your child has more toxin in, your, in their body if it is producing more toxin than the required if it does not excreting the the amount of toxin which is being uh, uh, produced in the body as a byproduct of metabolism those kind of thing and for for most in the therapies occupational therapy will be the one of the most uh therapies among the most therapies i am sure previously you must have been uh, uh, attended the session of occupational therapist they would have been told you because uh, in order to connect to the environment uh, i just mentioned uh, a while ago that the four challenges that uh, uh, um, uh connecting to the environment so connecting to the environment how does it happen Uh, all the senses, whatever we have, all the five senses. Now it's called seven, but the basic five senses, they are the pathway to the brain. As in, like they are the roads which takes the information from the environment to the brain. For example, if if a cup of a hot cup of tea is kept in front of you, how does your brain know that it's uh, hot? Either you see the steam coming out where your uh, eyes are used. or else you touch it and then your brain knows that it's a hot and then the your touch sensation sends the signal to the brain so channelizing your uh, senses are very 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 important in order to develop the perception about the world to you, uh, for your child yeah now moving on to the speech and language first and then we'll move on to the communication so briefly i'll tell you what exactly speech is speech is exactly like it's a motor skill basically so how do you produce the sounds your whole vocal tract is used to produce a particular sound as in like uh, for if you say pa so in order to say pa your lips are used your vocal tract the the uh, tract from you if you see the uh, voice box at your neck to the lip the vocal tract is used in that so it's a motor skill it's the uh, act of producing sound that is called speech so there are many errors in uh, that which we see in the asd population there could be like if you of the child you say they have a very different different accent than the usual like how we talk the people around in the environment of the child talk and uh, they have the different uh, accent most of the asd kids so because their brain functions little differently than us so that gets them to have a diff little different accent than us and then you see the error in uh, in the speech of these kids like a few of the kids they they would not say the complete they would omit particular sound they would add particular sound to the word they would stress the word like for example if they have to say cake they might say k to so they add the words so those kind of errors happen in speech and it happens speech happens at two level like uh, when you say a motor skill and if you say why motor skill cannot be achieved by itself because my child is doing everything else the motor skill as a like he can take a okay so someone's phone is not mute please mute your phone thank you so uh, so when you say that my child can do lots of motor activity he he can uh, put the beads he can do the drawing but he cannot talk so the, it happens at two level one is phonological level and one is phonetic level 
so again the involvement of particular part of brain is needed in order to produce the sound so that may be affected that channel may be affected okay so everyone please mute the phone it's interrupting in between thank you so again the involvement of brain comes there which which does not let people uh, which does not, does not let your child make a particular type of sound even for you it might sound really uh, very easy to make yeah so speech must have been done in last few sessions as i was informed so directly moving on to the language yeah so what exactly the language language is a functional use of word as in like we use word to convey our idea to get the things uh, done from the other people to get the thing out we can demand we we negate like we can uh, present our wish to do something to not do something to get things done to not get things done yeah so now moving to the pattern of language development so how does language develop so when a child is small as in like when you say uh, when child is born itself about 3 or after about 3 or 4 week child starts making an eye contact with the immediate caregiver and uh, not in a very gross way but in very subtle way they start reacting to it which is non verbal way of communication a part of language gradually what happens a uh, child grows up different type of stimulus comes uh, on the way and child knows how to respond to that and then child by 6 or 7 month most of the kids few of them are delay by 9 month or 10 month they start imitating imitating as in like imitation of uh, maybe the sound or maybe the action action as in like smiling or like closing the eyes or clapping the hand or doing particular type of action different child have different type of imitation at initial level gradually they all come to the same level yeah so then gradually like when you say when you talk to a child okay smile baby please smile or you you make your face smile and then the child see and gradually when child grows up after listening those words child associate that particular action with the word so after like you say uh, 45 to 60 or 75 days 45 to 75 days of the child starts understanding and associating the word with particular action so initially the um, uh, associate association starts with action and once the child is like 12 month or so they usually reach the first word most of the like 60 to 70% of the typically child reach Uh, started talking one word by the age of uh, first birthday yeah so after that associ um, mean why the association start like uh, you can give the instruction to child child can execute it the simple instruction even though they don't don't say like if you say okay, okay uh, give get me the ball so child goes and gets you the ball but if you ask the one year old child what is it if child is too talkative it might tell you but most of the child cannot say what it is but they starts understanding and associating the word and responding to it yeah so gradually the meaning associates with the object or the action for example the cap or the bottle or the ball the most commonly used ones are these yeah? or the color or the number or the shape so so the hierarchy goes on the the initially the box will be the first associated word and then the nouns and then gradually it goes on the num the color noun noun has like variety of things like the uh, fruits animals uh, furniture utensils clothes so it goes on like that and then gradually the comes the instruction following of the child you give some instruction ki okay please give me the ball please put on your shoes do clapping do brushing go to bed so the the its uh, comprehension of language starts happening at that point yeah but i'm talking about the typically developing kids as of now we'll move on to the asd category now it's just to brief you all how the language develop happen so then the after uh, association happens and the meaningful association is established then starts the expression expression initially comes as demand like if you see the child child learns initially learns the it usually the first words are demands 
so uh, the words as in like the object so if they need something if they need a ball they they'll come to you and they'll say ball it in they intend to say that they want a ball they want to play it could be anything related to ball but they need a ball so it comes with the demands and then gradually comes the need the the basic needs like the toilet toilets or the hunger or the sleep or the play so demands and the needs and then comes the second level of language whereby two and half like usually starts by 18 to 24 months the questioning starts in the typically developing child where child becomes inquisitive and starts asking what is this who is this so what who and where are the question which comes first in the typically developing child uh mostly by the age of 20 24 months or 3 years then gradually comes the past even description so it's not the lengthy uh, sentences so it comes as like okay if you say mall child you say something about the mall which he likes or if child visits their grandparents house or particular places or park child will say some so they start talking on the base of their memory so they can describe uh, tell or describe about the past thing then comes the uh, sharing of feeling like if they got hurt or if they they are not well or if they wants to they want to sleep so those kind of feelings so then comes the feeling and the meanwhile the feeling and the storytelling usually comes at the mostly comes at the same time so by three these are the skills we uh, assume to be achieved by a typically developing child what all are these the demands the needs questioning or not all the question again the basic question what who where few of the kids start asking how and why why even though the meaning is not very much uh, clear but a uh, few of the kids start asking and then comes the pa past even uh, description and the storytelling and the share uh, sharing the feeling the uh, once the child is 3 and half or 4 in meanwhile they learn the complaining about others if something happen in the school or someone does the family member does something to the child and this starts arguing with, with you like want them to do something they don't want to do something they'll argue with you they start lying yeah because you can never filter the learning learning is all, always positive and negative so they'll start lying they'll they'll start blaming they'll defend the thing if they do something you tell them no uh, you have done or uh, you have not done they'll start defending themselves in um, so many ways so this is the pattern of language development in a uh, typically developing kids so now we'll move on to the component of language okay so meanwhile i tell you all the parents or whosoever has joined uh, so if you have any question because you're not going to do question answer session in this uh, particular um, presentation so if you have any question meanwhile you can please note it down we can cover it up in upcoming session yes so now we we'll move on to the components of language so language is a very 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 huge term very huge term first language is divided into two as you most of you have been told about there is this comprehensive language and expressive language so what exactly comprehensive language is like when you say something and child understands it and maybe execute may not be execute depending on their age and level of the language so that is called comprehension of it and expression so when you ask something or when you say something they reply you back in a particular uh, context so that is called expression of language so first component of language is semantic semantic the meaning of semantic itself is the meaning of particular word for example if you say apple so what does exactly apple mean apple is a fruit which is red in color mostly round in shape which can be used for eating yeah so it it can vary in size it can be small it can be big but this is a particular character so what the particular object or the person or place or action or anything has a outline of it so this particular thing is called this if it has these many characters for example what exactly chair is so chair which has base and four legs and a back support yeah so back support as a, so these are the basic thing of chair 
and you can add it has it can have armrest it can has many other things like uh, oh, the fancy cover on it the fancy design on it the back support can be of different type so it can be different shape and size the basic uh, characteristic of chair remains the legs of it, it and the back support and the uh, base of it yeah so uh, semantics means the association of word with particular object or the action or place or person or anything for that matter so it can be a noun it can be a verb it can be adjective it can be adverb so semantic covers all of them now based on uh, the uh, component i'll just tell you how to develop the semantic of um, language part of it first in order to have semantic child should minimum have the identification and identification as a like again the part the first part com comes is comprehension so in order to um, increase the identification you can use matching you can use shorting you can use the uh, the different type of real object in instruction so if you say if you keep saying your child okay go wear your shoes put your shoes on that uh, remove your shoes so if you keep in this particular world even though child doesn't know what exactly shoes but every time you say and then you bring the particular object gradually the child associates it he, okay fine this particular type of thing is called so whatever is uh, to be worn in the feet is called shoes yeah so next comes the um, instruction following which helps in uh, developing the which helps in developing the uh, vocabulary of verb right so to vocab to increase the vocabulary of verb, you have to do uh, instruction following. For example, just say uh, for, uh, if you want to teach a child clapping, right? So when the child is sitting, you can say, "Okay, clap your hand." If child does not do, you can clap your hand. Still, child doesn't know. You can hold the child's hand and make it clap. Once child starts doing, then you can start touching the elbow and just prompting it to clap. So gradually child will learn, okay, this particular, when the parents or whosoever says clapping, this is what I have to do. And gradually it associates, okay, so this is clapping. So if you have to uh, teach your child sleeping, for example, you can, you can show, first you can show, okay, look, mama is sleeping. You can use the animal for the cartoon, like whatever child can identify, make it sleep on the bed. So once this is done, so once the basic sleeping act is done on the bed, so now child will associate, okay, the act of lying down on bed is sleeping. So this is what your child will understand. Next, you have to generalize the term. So sleeping is done, basic sleeping is done. So you have to generalize it. So whenever you say, okay, uh, better make, child, make teddy bear sleep, so he'll always go and make it sleep on the bed. So next, you have to, in order to generalize, you have to make your chi child make teddy bear sleep on the sofa as well because it's a sleeping is an act of lying down so it can be on the bed it can be on the sofa it can be on the floor it can be on the mat so sleeping has to be generalized next so whichever uh, verb you are you teaching your child make sure you are generalizing it yeah and uh, the technique can be used the imitation you can show your child first if child responds on that well does not respond do prompting if child prompt uh, does not uh, cannot uh, respond on prompting hold the hold the hand make the child do particular action so the best way to teach verb yeah it's a uh, time taking it's little tedious the, but the best way to teach the verb is modeling always execute initially it's not always possible for all the parents to have uh, people around so use the toys Toys are basic, very basic, but, but very, very important tool in the therapy or teaching any of the skill as such. Sorry. Yeah. So use the animals or the cartoon, depending on the kid's interest. So most of the ASD kids uh, fortunately love the animals once they are taught. So animals and cartoons can be used for the generalization. So again, Semantics has to be developed by shorting, uh, matching, uh, imitation, and prompting. 
once it is done it has to be generalized in a particular context be it a noun be it a verb right next comes the expression of it semantics so now we were talking about the comprehension where child understands the uh, meaning of particular word so next comes the expression like when you when child has made the teddy bear sleep on the bed and then you ask beta what what teddy bear is doing or what did you make teddy bear do then the child should be able to tell it sleeping even if it's a word that's fine at initial level the child should be able to say uh, sleeping when he says sleeping it means child has got the expression of particular word and he he's reached the he's emerged in the uh, expression of semantics for uh, this level you have to make sure that child uses the word at least you do not expect your child to say the word teddy bear is sleeping on the bed this is not very much uh, encouraged in my practice as such first to uh, target the keyword whatever you are questioning you have to ask and uh, then it has to be in a variety like who is sleeping on the bed teddy bear because there is one sentence teddy bear is sleeping on the bed and then if you put up the question there will be different question so again it has to be in a component who is sleeping on the bed there would be the answer teddy bear what is teddy bear doing teddy bear is sleeping on the bed uh, where is teddy bear sleeping sleeping on the bed so it will be different component for different answer so again it has to be generalized next come after establishing the meaning and getting the uh, expression of cement the meaning of particular word we are moving to the syntax syntax as in like structure and, or sequence of the word uh, to get the particular meaning for example i water drink so if you say the meaning of it it's like someone wants to drink water but it, in order to get the correct meaning of it it has to be put in a particular order the grammatical order yeah so after semantic child starts the uh, speaking or the responding to the particular stimuli in a word so if the child really jumps to the second level if they pick up the word fast and then the then start the semantic to putting the word in a sequence so we encourage first to do the noun plus verb right so if you ask better what are you eating if he says apple that is an answer correct good enough but it has to be uh, expanded eating apple you can just uh, once child start answering apple then you can move on to the putting the uh, move on to put in the verb like eating apple then gradually uh, you can increase to the level i am eating apple yeah then gradually you can increase to the length like i am eating apple in a plate or i am eating apple or uh, in a bowl i am eating apple with a fork so the uh, the expansion has to happen in syntax yeah so the structure word is goes in syntax first would be noun then noun plus verb and then subject plus object plus verb as in like i am eating apple yeah and then comes the preposition i am eating apple in a plate i am eating apple with a fork so that's how it keeps increasing the structure of a uh, sentence <clears throat> yeah then comes the pragmatic it's the use of language in different social contexts so what exactly are the uh, subcategories of it like in order to demand something in order to express their need in order to question in order to elaborate the event or, or situation in order to complain or argue or uh, defend or tell the story so these are the things yeah so pragmatic pragmatic needs a lot of different things as in like when you start talking to someone usually it's a question answer things first like you meet someone what do you do first first we greet and first we greet and then we start uh, questioning the conversation start at the question level hey hi how are you so when you say how are you it's a question and in order to get an answer the child should be able to understand the question first so the all the greeting greeting skill and the social question initially for most of the kids if they have attended aba most of the social uh, social questions are done so pretty much they are able to answer it, the question and uh, then the then the conversation goes on oh well so where did you go what did you do 
and in order to maintain the communication the two person among the two person one has to be listener and other has to be the speaker and the role keeps changing alternatively or uh, once in a while to maintain the uh, communication for example if you meet one of your friend and if you say hey how are you what did you do how have you been and child doesn't ask sorry the your friend doesn't ask back uh, any of the question or if they keeps answering after a while the conversation will stop because you know oh, she or he is not interested in particular thing so to, to maintain the communication the wh question is very 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 important so now moving on to the question how to develop the wh question again the uh, the category will be comprehension of question expression of question once this is done then the hierarchy will be first person second person third person as in like once the child start understanding the question then child starts answering the question and then child can answer the thing about himself child can answer the thing about second person child can answer the thing about third person so hierarchy has to be followed in at school level first is uh, comprehension and expression second is first person second person third person yeah so the questions as you all know most these these are the eight basic wh questions so comes to what now exclusively we are talking about the as ticket so i'll talk in uh, the sub category the how do we do and how it has to be ideally done so when you start with the wh question like for example child has an has identification of Uh, objects around, and if you ask, okay, um, what is this? Then the child says, this is a pen. And if you are writing with the pen, and then if you ask, you know, what what is Mama doing with the pen? Or if child itself is writing with the pen, and if you ask, what are you doing with the pen? So first is the answer is noun. What is this? The answer will be noun. This is a pen. And then comes, what are you doing with the pen? So the answer will be verb again, writing. So what will be divided into two parts the noun the answer will be noun and the verb at the same goes for who question like for example who is this and the child knows it's mama but if you ask child what uh, like who is cooking the food or who is watching television or who is talking over phone then child should be first able to understand the situation and correlate the person to that and understand the question then answer it's a three layer process as in like first child has to understand the question first second child has to correlate the question to the environment and the person around second then the child will uh, answer it yes he, what that what is being asked what should be the answer like he, he can see that mama is cooking in the kitchen or mama is watching television because he has identification of television he has mama he can correlate pretty well and then he has to uh, retrieve the information what what is the answer of who because who always refers to a person so person will be answer so it's a three layer uh, event then comes the where where has got again two part one is the definite places for example the mall the school house uh, particular places the uh, relatives place or where the child goes around the market and then there comes the reference the reference as in like on under near uh, behind uh, so far near so these are the references like keep it on the table so child keep it on the table and if you ask where did you keep it child might answer might not answer depending on, on the level of their uh, language so where has got again two part the reference and the place reference all the prepositions you can say and the places are the definite places then comes the when when is referring to the um, time or the duration so again it has got two um, different subcategories one is time like when is a particular meaning of when when is one is time when is one is situation time as in like the day date or the duration of particular it's a period of particular day or the year or the season situation is like like for example when do you use an umbrella it's a situation like when it rains or when it's really sunny outside you use an umbrella like when the air conditioner when it's uh, hot or when it's um, those kind of things so when has got the two different component the time and the situation 
then comes the how many how many is basically refers to number the quantity so quantity can be definite and indefinite definite as in like the definite number like how many biscuits do you want or how many uh, ball do you have or how many toys do you have or how many people are sitting around or those kind of things and if indefinite are more less so these kind of things will come under how many then comes the who's the belongings yeah so whose phone is this or whose shoes is this whose uh, umbrella is this so that and then comes the uh, with who yeah so these are not with whom is not exactly the wh question but it it plays a very major role in language as such though it's very small word but very significant one in the language because in communication most of the time we ask with our kid okay whom do you want to go with whom do you want to play with so that time our kids the kids with asd have really difficult time uh, understanding the particular concept so i specifically keep it under the wh question like with who so that is one and then comes the how how has got again the two category one is the medium and another is the elaboration medium as in like the simple thing whatever is used for particular action like how do you go to school by a bus how do you eat with a spoon or with my hand like in india we have different modality of eating like depending on the food type how do you write with a pencil or a pen so the one will be the medium another will be the elaboration elaboration as in like okay tell me how did it happen for example a child fell down in the school he comes back or even if he fell down at home and you're it's not in your usual field if you ask your child how how do you uh, how do you how did you get hurt they tell okay i was playing on i was playing on the floor fell down or i was riding a bicycle it hit the door or it hit a particular hurdle and i fell down so it's elaboration or how did you for example if you ask even the child knows how to make a smile and if you ask how do you make a smile child may or may not be able to elaborate like first you make a circle then you make the eyes and then you make the nose uh, or then you make the lips and that's how a smile is made yeah and then comes the why question so why has what again three different uh, component of it it's one of the higher and most difficult question because it it needs a, a presence of mind it needs a logical and rational thinking which takes really not all the kids but uh, more than 60% of the kids with asd have difficulty in logical and rational thinking not i'm talking about the cognitive level but yeah at language level certainly it is at cognitive level they are good at it most of them they have good rational thinking not logical i can say but rational thinking is most of them have good so why has got three component like wish situation and command for, <clears throat> for example if you ask your child why did you keep the bottle on the table it could be because i don't child doesn't need it he can say because i don't want it could be because uh, bottle doesn't have water so he doesn't need it so he kept it it could be a command from the third person like the third person said that okay keep the bottle on the table yeah so it could be three part of it, um, the three uh, subsection of it the wish and the situation and the command in why yeah so one all of these are again for the comprehension like comprehension as in like child can understand expression as in like child can answer back and uh, then comes once child is doing expression and comprehension for itself then comes the first person like he can do it for itself he or she can do it for itself then he can do he can do for second person or he or she can do for the third person for example if mother keeps the bottle on the table and if mother is asked the child uh, why did mama keep the bottle on table then child should be able to say because mama wants to keep it because mama so it didn't have water because papa said mama to keep it on the table and then someone else kept the bottle and a second person is asking why is he kept why did he keep the bottle on the table then he should be correlate and tell about the third person because major difficulty i tell you previously the asd kids have are associating with the social context and learning so even after therapies for uh, teaching the perception about themselves through the world is very not very easy i would say but it's comparatively easy 
few, for few of the kids, it's really easy. But for uh, developing a perception about second and third person with the world is difficult. You really need to work uh, with along with your therapist or along with your family members to work hard to get this skill. And it is very, very, very important because more often we get the uh, complaints from the parents. Okay, ma'am, when you are, uh, if we ask you what are you doing, he can ask. If you ask, okay, what is Papa doing in another room, he cannot. Because he doesn't have the perception because he never felt the need, need of it. And he never felt the need of it. Then you ask, why did he not? Because most of the kids do. For them, it's uh, autism is all about not getting into the social context, not being related, not things are not being relatable to your kid. So you need to work. So few of the time you need to take your child, go to the other room, make your child see the person you're talking about, make your child see the person, what the person is doing, associate the question with them and gradually with few trial or for, for few of the kids it take many trials and then they start getting about it, what the other person is doing. So it's very, very important to develop the perception about second person, third person, or any of the people around, yeah? So one, then the WH question has got three parts. One is comprehension and the expression. So comprehension means understanding the question. Expression means the child can answer your question. The most important and the third part comes is putting up the question. So now child can answer you. Okay, how many, how many biscuits do you want better? He can tell you, I want three biscuits, I want two biscuits. So where do you want to go? Child can tell you, I want to go to mall. Next comes the, uh, why my child doesn't ask the question? So this is a big challenge. It's a really big challenge. So then you need to create the situation. Start with the basic question. For my strong suggestion is start with where. Sorry. So why where? Reason is that first child child ASD kids do not have any interest in the people yeah so if you ask uh, if you ask uh, to talk about a person he is least interested i tell you with my experience least interested would not bother even if you try you ask who is on the door ask who will who wants to eat this he, he'll just repeat after you initially and gradually he lose the interest because he does not understand the purpose of it the intention of it why he is being uh, he's being asked to ask the question so the best way to and then you ask ma'am what is the first question what particular i'm talking about what 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 is the first question child achieve? yes child do achieve the first question because they're spontaneous learner and then they have inquisitiveness to to know the world because they are connected to world our kids with asd they do not have connection with world first you need to always keep in the mind you have to bring the connection back their their list bothered about inquisitiveness anything is happening around them they are just less bothered they don't want to give any attention to that yeah so what and who are not the my personal suggestion not the better question to pick up with pick up with the where question reason most of the as tickets again most when i say most it's 70 to 80 percent of the as tickets have the fixation for particular objects or particular situation yeah so when you start doing the where question if child does not find anything of his favorite his or her favorite so when you tell your child uh, if if siblings are around or any family members are around, even if you're making the child repeat after you and make make your child ask you you the question where is the ball if child is fixated with a particular ball so where is the ball so when you say near the table, initially child might not understand. You have to get the child, go to the particular place, figure it, let the child figure out, relate to the question, he'll come back. So after a few trials, whenever he'll not see the particular object, he'll start putting the word again. And even at this point of time, when start child starts asking you question, he may not understand the meaning of question. He'll only associate the question with particular event. Whenever he does not see a ball, he'll come to you, where is the ball? You say at the particular place, he get it. So you say, okay, ma'am, he, he questions, where is the ball? But he doesn't answer, where is Papa? Well, he will not answer. So again, the generalization has to happen for different things. Then once you start, start with his favorite things, 
then start with his daily use things for example the brush the shoes like you know they have the particular schedule to do the particular object to use for the particular schedule create the situation keep it at some place if two people are around it's very good one can model the question second can answer if not then only the mother or father whoever is the friendly caregiver can uh, can tell the child okay ask mama mama if you say go do the brush uh, go do the brushing or uh, put on your shoes child is in fine it will keep at you he might keep saying shoes shoes he intended to ask but he wouldn't put up the question so then you say ask mama where is the shoe so do it for minimum 10 to 15 object in order to generalize once the object is generalized then do it in different situation for the with the same object to generalize so generalize always happens at two level one first thing whatever your basic basic goal whatever you have taught has to be generalized once that is generalized then different situation for the basic goal has to be generalized yes so that was like that putting up the question so better way to start the putting up the question is pick the where then go to what then go to who and by god's grace most of the kids start picking up at faster rate then you can start introducing more and more questions again so then comes the we take up the abstract words so now it comes whatever we talk about okay who is sitting on the sofa papa is sitting on the sofa what is papa doing papa is watching television what is papa watching watching in television the news show whatever well then it comes the abstract words which child cannot see and touch rather it's the feeling for example the hunger the thirst the sleep the the feeling of the sadness or abstract words like arrange hide so these are the abstract words which are not uh, which cannot be felt which only can be uh, which cannot be felt by a tangible uh, sense it has to be done and uh, associated with the word so you cannot make your child see hunger make your child touch hunger make your child hear hunger you have to make your child understand the particular situation or the feeling which is called hunger excuse me yeah so uh, abstract word you make a list of abstract word like hide <coughs> hunger sleep thirst and you start over using it in your uh, daily vocabulary right for example usually what the child say i want to eat he doesn't he or she doesn't say i am hungry he always says i want to eat he never uses it eventually because our child has been a delayed kid so eventually we have come to the level where we started simplifying our language so we never use with our child beta are you hungry beta are you sleepy we just say do you want to eat do you want to sleep do you want to drink water so we always use the concrete word we never use the abstract word so start over using the uh, abstract words like are you hungry even child doesn't understand initially but keep using it sorry before giving the food you say your child you are hungry you want to eat food over a period of time again i say the yes the kid have learning pattern bottom up so usually the typically developing kids have the uh, learning pattern of bottom uh, sorry uh, bottom uh, up to down and they have bottom up so they go from uh, bottom to up the higher point so meaning what happens with us we hear and learn and then do yes this is the uh, um, up down process for them they do they see they they hear and then they learn so our learning especially language of learning is uh, learning of language starts from hearing no for them does for example if you ask a recipe if these parents are most of them are mother i am talking about so if you, you if you want to learn some recipe how do you learn if you ask someone over a phone you ask and they tell you and then you imagine and then you do at your home for them no they don't learn by them they do it they see it they hear it and then they learn it yes so that's why i tell you to overuse the abstract word in your in your expressive vocabulary so they start listening it they start associating with and then to start the getting the meaning of it for us it happens first we get that for example if it's some uh, for me english hasn't been my first language it 
it's my second third language actually so for even today if i hear some of the word in english first i need to know the meaning of it then only i can imply it or i can use it in different context for these kids no that doesn't happen they need to do it first get the meaning and then they learn the word so it's a always a bottom up process so when they uh, when you start overusing the word in your expressive vocabulary they keep listening to the word they uh, start associating word with the particular context and then they start understanding and then they start using so this goes like that so use the uh, use the abstract use of abstract word is as important as you as having the putting up questions questioning skill so remember to make a list of it first you overuse it create the situation where you can overuse it once you have used it for say 10 to 15 days in your, in your vocabulary then you can ask your child to repeat after you put up the word in question like if you for example you can ask uh, if you're using the hungry word then you can put them in the activity ask dinosaur dinosaur are you hungry ask teddy bear teddy bear are you hungry you want to eat so once you are using the abstract word use the concrete word simultaneously simultaneously in order to have a parallel connection between them yeah so the, these are the part of language then comes the storytelling and the past description yeah so most of the parents have this thing ma'am he goes to school doesn't tell me anything if we ask he might tell he might not tell. so is it a um, memory issue no certainly it's not it's just that the child doesn't understand what are you asking so the best way to start the past i'm talking about past memory or past description exclusively in this section what you do is at home when you do some particular type of activity uh, for example if you do a doctor game or uh, any of the um, cooking game with your child once you are done ask your child showing the particular place what did you do child certainly child wouldn't answer you you need to tell them okay we played a doctor game so start the information at the very minimum basic which is just the keyword once child for in in three or four or five days or a week or 10 days depending on the child's learning pace child will start answering you when you ask okay we played this particular game once this is done then you ask okay what did you do in the once you are done playing the game then then you ask what did you do in the doctor's game now you pick the keyword once child started answering you child picks the keyword uh, when child starts answering you the keyword you pick it as a keyword in your question so what did you do in the doctor game then child might say might not say we did the checkup of dinosaur so increase the detailing of it gradually so whatever child answers you you make it you pick the keyword and put it in your sentence as a question and then keep improving on it so first do it immediately after you have done the activity once this established as in like child can tell you what happened who who did what and where it happens so if you you are able to get three to four wh question ka answer then you can probably move on to the duration like you do the activity leave it for a while maybe after five or six minutes you can ask again use the prompt sorry go to the particular place after five minutes okay what did you do here beta you played a doctor game then you start asking details and you start understanding increase the length of duration once it is five minutes then go to 15 minutes then go to 30 minutes then go to 50 minutes then increase it then you can ask about about your uh, about the breakfast in the afternoon to your child then uh, things which are out of your sight which these are the things which have already happened at whom you know it so then comes the school thing so best way you, uh, uh, to start it with you can talk to the class teacher of your child for a week or 10 days if they can message you or mail you only the key uh, task of the particular day so you have it in a brief so when you ask your child child doesn't an answer you can so if you ask what did you do in the school so you can tell you you did writing you did coloring you did your lunch you played or danced whatever so four to five key tasks you should have or if you can have a week of program in ahead in your hand so you can tell your child so gradually that helps for example if you as of now we are all are uh, really locked in lockdown since four months so not now but whenever you go to park whenever you go to mall or visit some relatives or neighbor's place come back 
Tell me if that doesn't work with your child, few of the child can get this thing by this method. Doesn't work. Wherever you are going, click a picture, come back home, show the picture, tell your child. Okay, we went to mall. Child does not answer you. Tell the show the picture, tell the child because all of us have a phone handy nowadays, so it's not a difficult task. Okay, you went to mall, you did this ball pool, you this did particular activity, we did shopping, we ate food outside, we had a ride, whatever those kind of things. Yeah. So this particular method can be applied for the past event. Next, next come the storytelling. So storytelling is exclusively uh, uh, we talk about storytelling exclusively in order to get the retrieval skill, memory skill, and the uh, imagination. Yes. So when you say most of the more, not most of uh, so many parents do that storytelling thing since beginning, yet they haven't achieved any success in that. And then they say, okay, I have been uh, reading up the story for my kids since then. It's been one year, it's been one and a half year, child is not responding. Yeah. First and foremost, thing, whosoever is reading story, use a basic book. Do not use a punch tantra or those kind of book which has lots of things happening in only one picture. First, first point. So better option is Bubbles, Nysa, Bruno, and these are the small, small stories which has got one thing happening at one page, less of text, more of picture. Use those kind of book for that. Yeah, so that is one of the first point to read up the story stacking. Now, before retelling the story, what I want you to do is uh, start modeling the story. Now, you say uh, not possible to model all the story, fine. So 60, per, 60 to 70 percent of the kids uh, have interest in rhymes. They watch lots of rhymes. Even though you have reduced the screen time, at least they know the rhymes. Like Ringa Ringa Roses, like Humpty Dumpty. And there are lot, lots of these many type of uh, these, um, what do you call them? Uh, old MacDonald thing. Yeah. So these type of rhymes they do. So they have a certain type of correlation to that. So you recreate the story on this. So if you want to play, uh, you if you want to do Ringa Ringa story, chalo, let's do Ringa Ringa story. So that you can take two or, two or four animal, you can give in their hands, start singing the song, do Ringa Ringa, make them fall. Because the major lagging, lagging in these kids are imagination. For example, so if I tell you now what is, Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. So if I if I tell you that there was a monkey sitting on a tree, so being a typically developing person, you are pretty much able to correlate. Um, imagine the situation: monkey was sitting on the tree. For example, if I tell you a uh, 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 dog was sleeping by a car then you you can imagine the particular situation but for these kids the major missing art they cannot imagine the said word yeah so is the reason that they cannot understand the story and retell you yes few of the kids are very good auditory learner they can buy heart they can vomit you exactly how you have said but most of the kid i'm talking to talking about not able to do that yeah so major missing is imagination Okay, so they cannot imagine the said word as we and like me and you can do. So the best way to develop the imagination is to do the modeling of story. It does not have to be really the elaborated uh, monkey and the capsule story or the monkey and the um, this uh, oh, those whatever stories are like rabbit or tortoise story. Yeah. So start like we are going to do ringa ringa story take for an animal make them do ringa ringa make them fall let them go yeah next you can use the humpty dumpty story because most of you have those eggs type of thing at home yeah you can have a horse you can have one character which can be the king's man so you start using the modeling for the story the little known character if kids are watching cartoon that's the best way if you don't have the cartoon character at home, get the print out of it, stick it on the cardboard, make it a put the thermocol behind it so that it can stand. Use it as a model. It works really well because we have done that. If you can buy, 
good enough you can buy the characters have it at home like pepper pig now all the characters are available in the on online these days motu patlu pepper pig these uh, doraemon thing the whole family type of thing. and uh, anyway you have these animals so you can use them for the characters so chalo these animals are going to do uh, humpty dumpty story these animals are going to do ringa ringa story these animals are going to do five little monkey story these animals are going to do five little duck story so you can first model them and then to start correlating it once they start once they are thorough in modeling and you are done and they can retell you the thing then you move on to the story with the less text clear picture the small pictures yeah so that's how you can uh, you uh, increase the story telling uh, develop the story telling skill now comes the component of communication yeah so communication is basically the act of exchanging ideas where two person can exchange the idea like you tell something i can i can agree to it i cannot agree to it. demand something i can do i cannot do it. all the components come under this so major prerequisites for uh, communication for iq it has to have a the average iq list uh, list needed then i say a motor skill motor skill again exclusively i am uh, pointing to the speech skill yeah and uh, speech skill and the simple then comes the sensory perception and integration because if senses are not uh, regulated not uh, integrated they cannot uh, process the information because it can, in the pro the information does not be correctly to the brain hence it cannot be processed then needed the language skill the previous language skill was whatever i have discussed in the previous topic yeah so once the communication has a uh, communication is achieved with all the brain is it then comes the socialization yeah the socialization is a major challenge even though child have all the skill uh, the complaint is does not make friends does not answer to strangers does not really uh, responds to other like who is less visited family members or the extended family members yeah then uh, comes the uh, perception of my uh, perception of others and play skill and memory imagination and retrieval these are the basic prerequisites for the socialization how to do that one first uh, when you you have come to this level start or previous to that you can start developing perception about others okay the person sitting in front of you is not always your demands supplied as in like child always has the thing okay i am only the receive at receivers end i am not at the supplier end either at any place be it a information supplier be it some execution of some work be it uh, some other conversation so he is never a supplier to so make your child a supplier make it make it very important for your child to under, understand that you are also supposed to execute something you have some responsibility okay well responsibility is a huge term responsibility as in like you are also expected to some, to do something for example people who all have two kids uh, if one is a typically developing other is a special one if you are typically developing kid is uh, sitting with you you certainly expect something your child to do for you but if your child with special need is sitting in front of you you it's not that you don't expect somewhere in your deep down it, at your heart you know that he can not do so i will not tell him or her so please eradicate that thought from your mind he is a he or she is a human being first certainly he is not uh, typical like us since beginning and i don't say they become a typical and typical a typical individual but over a period of time and practice they become very near to typical very near to typical so first thought you need to irad <coughs> sorry eradicate from your mind is like he cannot do it no he can do it because you know the kids with asd they are a good problem solver for themselves if they find anything difficult even if they don't talk if they need something they'll they'll get you get them the thing they'll get you get them the 
stuff or the action or particular thing done for themselves. So if they can do things for themselves, certainly they can do for others as well. So please train them to perceive the intention or the wish for, of others for them. Like they make them a supplier as well. Don't make them a receiver only. That is a huge mistake from parents' part. Mammy, like he does not do, so we do not tell. So if even if we tell, he does not do so. And it doesn't happen at once. It's a very, very, very tedious work. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of perseverance, a lot of lot and lot of rigorous hard work. So make your child a supplier as well. Do not only make a receiver. So if child does something, tell your child. How does it affect positively or negatively both to the other person? Person sitting in front of the child. Yes? So that has to be done. So develop the perception about others. Play a skill. Very, very important in order to get socialized. So often you see the kids with ASD getting socialized with the peers. Uh, sorry, adults more often than the peers. Yes? Reason that uh adults come to the level to level of them sorry to make the things under make them think understand but fear of there is they do not and even if they do they do once or twice and then they get fed up of because one language is not at par so fear don't get a uh, uh, reciprocation from the kids with asd one second uh, play skill is not as developed as the peers. So even if verbal communication is not there, if uh, they can involve through the play, that can happen. So that is not happening. So play is a serious business of childhood. Do not take it as uh, just play. How does kids? How does kid learn? How do kids learn? They learn among the peer, uh, with the peers by through the play. Play as in like they have to learn to play. Play as in like use use a particular toy in a particular way. One, uh, you uh, follow the rule of particular game because when a game played in a group, it has got particular rule that has to be followed. So play basic requisite prerequisite of play is uh, having a skill to use the toy in particular order and. Uh, uh, and uh, following the rule. So how to develop it? Play a small game at home, make a rule. For example, even if you are making a, doing a OT activity of, at home like bear walk or those kind of the balance things. So make it a rule. You will do, Papa will do, or ma mother will do. So turn taking, uh, fix the timing, fix the number of repetition. You, have, you can do only two repetition of it and then the second person will do. Now, uh, then if you have particular type of activity, the throw and catch thing that you can only throw, you cannot catch and you cannot, you cannot do both. So you have under, make them understand their role in particular activity. So start it at home. Yeah. And then comes the imagination. Again, to the imagination, the best way to develop the imagination is do the modeling, the small story modeling, and then gradually it comes to the level where the child can imagine the said thing where when the kids talk among them. Okay, my father brought me a uh, this uh, uh, Superman T-shirt. So other kids can imagine, even though they don't see, but they can imagine. For kids with ASD, it's difficult for them to imagine what is that Superman uh, T-shirt. Yeah. So develop the imagination. So socialization is the last and the final level to reach in in terms of development, and which has got lots of prerequisites. Language is the major component and major but achievable. The most difficult component is uh, perception of others. So make your child supplier, do not only make your child a receiver. I hope the things will help you out. In next session, probably we'll cover up the things. If you have any query through this session or any other query related to uh, language, we will cover in the upcoming sessions. This is from the my end. I over it to Mr. Pramod. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am, for all this information and, uh, and thank you so much for your time. So uh, yeah, for this session we received uh, so many queries. So I have noted down all those queries, and there are a couple of queries in this 
session also so uh, soon we are soon we are going to uh, i mean announce the date for the next uh, session and we will definitely address those questions as well as okay uh, sorry to interrupt you sorry to interrupt you okay so whosoever is putting up the question they have to put up the language level of child and the age of child so i have a clear cut idea and i can give you more precise answer or the, uh, the solution for it yeah right right so uh, definitely definitely i mean uh, the parents who have who has having uh, in all these queries so they will share all these details so it would be easier for you to provide the solution right yes. all right so yeah so thank you uh, we can meet thank you all for joining us hope to see you next time yeah thank you thank you ma'am thanks bye